Chapter 20 Health That Brings Magic Why is it that there are such marked physical differences in the various classes of humanity? In some persons we see diseased and distorted figures, and in others we see fine and perfect demonstrations of radiant health. It depends so much on their thinking and eating. Most people are only hanging on to life. They are not able to work magic. But you, as a magician, must know just how to be radiantly fit and mentally alert. As a magician, you must know how best to keep fit and how to extend your life and live a long, long time. All the magic in the world that you may work for yourself is of little value unless you are radiantly fit and able to live a long time to enjoy it. If you are beginning to make wonderful demonstrations, and you should be doing so by now, then you need glorious health to enjoy the fruits of your success. By eating the right foods you will be able to say, gone are the aches and pains, the feelings of fatigue, the deadly lassitude that kills. You will no longer turn over in bed in the morning to sleep a while longer. You will be up with the lark, singing, glad to be alive. You will not be touchy and irritable any more. You will never know what it is to be fagged out. This is the perfect existence. Life for you will be grand. The wind's on your heath, brother. Who would wish to die? That's how you will feel when you are well. Your swimming pool, your Rolls Royce, your yacht, your palatial home, your dreams that have come true through the magic in your mind. What use are they if you are sick and tired? How can you enjoy your newfound treasures if you are old and weak? Youth, eternal youth, that's what you want. Bronzed and beautiful and everlasting. Are you losing your youth? How are you losing it? And why, left too long, youth can be never recovered. If you are not as young as you used to be when life was fun, if you are fully conscious that you are getting older and begin to feel as one does during the last dance of a ball, tired but keen, then decide right now to do something about it. You can remain young in spirit and fit in body until well over a hundred. Many people do. It is not just a matter of your attitude to life and thinking the right thoughts, but it's a matter of what you eat. There are foods which help enormously towards giving you the power to work magic. And there are foods which gradually numb the mind, like slow poison, so that you can never, never have that power. Let magic play a vital and fuller part in your health plan. As a magician you have the power to bring health and beauty to the highest standard that the world has ever known and as real tranquility to your mind. So let's consider food and what we eat, eat most of, bread. Bread, they say, is the staff of life. What sort of bread, brown or white? This argument has been going on officially since Nero put the Romans on a diet of bread. Nero and his court liked it white. Is there any difference between brown bread and white as regards food value, sufficient that it matters? I think so. A lady said to me the other day, my son and, and daughter have each collected some tadpoles to observe their evolution into frogs. My son put some white bread crumbs in the bowl for them to feed, and my daughter put brown bread crumbs into her bowl. The next day all my son's tadpoles were dead, but my daughter's are still thriving. You like white bread and you eat large quantities of it. White bread is treated to maintain its colour, but the agent use may be slowly doing to you, as a white bread eater, what it rapidly did to the more fragile tadpoles. Don't you agree? Maybe it is slowly killing that something in your mind that works magic, that precious th something. I don't say it is, but I think there is a strong possibility. Brown whole wheat bread is the best because the wheat germ and the outer coating of the wheat 
contains most of the vitamins and minerals we need, whereas white bread millers knock out the essential ingredients to sell to other firms or as animal feeding. They can make as little money they can make a little money on the side, so to speak. Do we lose anything from our diet by eating white bread instead of brown whole wheat? Of course we do, says Mr. C. Donald Winsel, member of the Soil Association. The millers take out 30% of the nutrition in wheat. Like this, even if they put a little bit of it back, essential vitamins are lost from our diet. When you start adding chemicals to food and adulterating natural food, harm and ill health is bound to result. Why do the Red Indians, the Africans, the Hunzas enjoy such perfect health? Because they eat pure food grown on natural soil. To bring out the magic in your mind, you must give thought to these things. And side note here is, recently I le read the book called The Wheat Belly. The Wheat Belly. The author's name eludes me now. But you have to read that book to consider the question of wheat here. It was only published in, in, in 2011 or something. So he's a cardiologist doctor. The Wheat Belly. You have to read that book to put this perspective. So most people are fond of sugar. Have you considered sugar? You prefer it white. Did you know that a report from the Californian farmer a little while ago recommends the use of sugar as a pest killer? and it quoted the scientific work to justify this. The United States Department of Agriculture Sciences have found that ordinary sugar mixed into soil acts as a highly effective killer of nematodes. This is the first known nematode killing material discovered that is non-toxic to warm-blooded animals and leaves no residue in the soil. Sugar kills the pests. It is only a slow poison to humans, but who wants to be killed even slowly? It must dim the light in your mind, bit by bit, until the day comes when you are unable to think properly, and certainly you must lose all power to work magic in the end. Note the words of a highly effective killer. Are you going to take a chance on it? If you must have sugar, brown sugar, that has not been messed about for whitening purposes is best, or better still, sweeten things with pure honey. Pure honey is good for you. What about water? The Ministry of Health has now approved the addition of sodium fluoride to water. What is fluoride? Artificial or inorganic sodium fluoride is a highly toxic protoplasmic poison, 13 times stronger than arsenic. Stronger than arsenic? You can call it rat poison. There is no difference. And a side note here is fluoride in the water calcifies your pineal gland, which is the spiritual third eye. So fresh spring water or bottled water, whatever you can get your hands on, avoid the fluoride. Dr. Guignot of Paris, on reaching his hundredth year, declared, Man does not die, but he kills himself. Little by little, you kill yourself. Most people really don't know how good, fresh, pure water can taste. The taste of ordinary water is killed with the chlorine. Well water has a clean, beautiful taste. Farm worker John Smith barred from his home officials who wanted him to use the council's water supply. Farm worker John Smith barred from his home officials who wanted him to use the council's water supply. He had his own well and had been drinking it for over 30 years. The only time his wife had ever been ill was when she stayed in a friend's house. She drank the council's water and got a skin complaint. I know people who drink rainwater and are healthy. I know people who have been whacked with rheumatism but when they started to drink only well water the aches and pains vanished. Many country people will tell you that. When you visualize the magnificent home you are wanting, visualize your own well in the garden. Don't take any chances on losing 
your power to work magic. Don't just keep ticking over. Study food and what is needed to keep you fit. Carrots and carrot juice ought always to be included in your diet. They are particularly good for the eyes and better sight. Many night flying pilots had carrots during the war to improve their sight in the dark. Heavens alive, you want to be able to see all these lovely things are go you are going to get. The onion is one of the oldest known vegetables in the world. It was amongst the foodstuffs which fed the Egyptian workmen who built the pyramids. You should eat plenty of onions. They are a purifier. Remember the fire walkers and how they strived all the time for purity of mind and body. Then there is garlic, which is so important if you want to be free of disease. If you want to keep illness at bay, garlic was known to the Egyptians at least 5,000 years ago and garlic is mentioned in an Indian Sanskrit treatise of Salerno 800 years ago. And aside on this is George Nouri's Coast to Coast AM radio has a health nutritionist expert on, I think off the top of my head, Brian Fuchs, F-U-C-H-S is his name, and he swears by garlic because of the allicin he calls it but there's a certain way you have to take the garlic so but he's the, the benefits of what he proposes allicin in the garlic does is absolutely phenomenal just food for thought garlic is a powerful natural cleansing medium during the plague of london a man walked through the streets calling bring out your dead and he escaped the disease by rolling a bulb of garlic continually in his mouth. Serve it as a main meal during serious epidemics. During the plague of London, hold households. So during the plague of London, hold households were saved from the scourge by the good offices of the garlic. Likewise, it is said, that grated ginger is considered of equal value. Many people sprinkle it on top of stout for the great benefit it is to health. Of all the herbs that grow, parsley is one of the most precious. More than 12,000 tons of parsley are produced in Britain each year, but only a small percentage, percentage is eaten. Parsley contains four times as much vitamin C as an equal weight of oranges. It has more iron, calcium and phosphorus than most fruits and vegetables. The Roman charioteers included an abundance of parsley in their horses' diet. Not only did it provide stamina, but made the horses fleet-footed. It has been considered more precious than laurel, a symbol of honour and glory. Entrants for the Ishmaean Games were fed on parsley and the winners crowned with parsley garlands. A few years ago, Miss Herb was crowned in Poland with a garland of parsley after winning a beauty contest. Sprigs of parsley are eaten at religious festivals for purification purposes. Purification again. You mustn't lose sight of that. We are aiming at purity all the time, i.e. the highest vibration you can get. The most pure the more pure you are in mind and body, the easier it is for you to reach the highest dimensions and so work magic of a spectacular kind. Eat a raw onion every day, if only a very small one, and eat as much parsley as you can every day, raw, chopped, fine. There is great value in these two things. The purer your food it is, the most sensitive you will become. The purer your food is, the more sensitive you will become. And that is important if you want to be a magician. You must be sensitive. Coconuts are something you knock down at fairs. Hardly ever do you go into a shop and buy one. Did you know that if you were stranded on a desert island with nothing to eat or drink but coconuts, you could go on living and be well indefinitely? The milk of the coconut has immense value. Also the nut, of course. 
Hermann Brinkmann of Kassel, Hessen, lived entirely on coconuts for a very long period. When he spent four months in Zanzibar in Kenya, he existed slowly on the coconut for food and drink, and he never contracted a tropical disease, nor was he ever in need of a doctor. The coconut is one of the finest things to eat and drink. Even if it means a revolution in your diet, do include these things that make for a long life and a radiant health. One could mention endless fruit and vegetables which are a must and which you should take daily, black currants, oranges, apples, the banana, which is everything, and good cheese. Study the subject of right foods and apply them in your diet. To bring out the magic in your mind, you must be above average health. Also, Kevin Trudeau of the Nat Natural Cures They Don't Want You to Know About Book fame highly recommends doing cleanses regularly. Now there's different organ cleanses or you can do a whole body cleanse because toxins from mercury fillings, toxins from chemicals and pesticides in the food etc etc build up in the system in the body over the years. So doing cleanses, natural cleanses also highly beneficial. What gives a gorilla its enormous strength? Nuts just plain nuts. Dates are a simple wonderful pick-me-up when you are tired. Oh yes I could go on and on but I want you to study these things yourself. All I say is that right diet is a necessary part of your program. If you want to have the right mind and body for working magic and for gaining youth so that you can enjoy your material treasures for a long long time. You need not be a vegetarian to work magic but not eating meat helps you more to acquire the purity you are after. The longer I live, the more convinced I am that the state of health of millions of men and women is only a shadow of what it ought to be. Also on this note, Kevin Trudeau, used to, on his radio show, internet radio show, used to swear by organic grass-fed beef without hormones and and antibiotics fed to the cattle in the beef chain. Do you understand? So the meat was as pure as natural as you could get. Also another consideration. The world's best known vegetarian was perhaps the famous thinker and playwright, the late George Bernard Shaw, a fellow Irishman I may add. He was told by his doctors that he would die unless he ate meat. What did he do? He replied without any fear in his heart, well let us try the experiment. Only if I succeed I shall expect you all to become vegetarians. He survived to a good old age. He wrote, my situation is a solemn one. Life is offered to me on condition of eating beef steaks. But death is better than cannibalism. Now this is a personal choice. Would you eat meat or not? Completely personal choice. There's no good or bad, only good, better and best. So he was renowned for his fine physique and told us that he always finished his lunch with an apple or orange. The Tibetan yogis and Indian fakirs who can do the most magical things on a vegetarian diet make you wonder why you are so keen on meat. And they give the example of pound per pound, the strongest animal in the world, I believe, is the horse. The horse only eats grass, maybe oats and nuts, and bear, whatever, but pound per pound. Anyway, Dr. Alan E. Bannock found the secrets of long life in, in, his, in this fabulous country, Tibet. One of the secrets is that for 2,000 years they have lived in complete isolation. They are in the world, but not of it. Hmm. When the doctor returned home, he started to grow his own food in the organic way that the Hunzas taught him. There is mineral strength in their food which makes them germ resistant. We could benefit in the same way if we gave up all this mad fertilizer business and poison sprays and the rest of it. Herbicides, pesticides, chemicals in the food chain, genetically modified, 
modified food, high fructose or corn syrup, etc., etc., etc. No disease has ever gained a hold in their country. Vegetables and fruits are grown in organic manures without artificial fertilizers. Their strength is incredible. It is a well-known fact that men of 80 can walk 65 miles and back, then return to their work immediately, and they walk standing up. They eat apricots, stone and all. The stone, they say, is the best part. The oil in the stone gives richness to the blood. They eat a lot of fresh and dried fruit and nuts. They rise at five in the morning and go to bed early. And don't forget the isolation, silence, stillness and solitude, of course. That is why medita meditation is so good for you. You isolate yourself completely and think. I think it was Winston Churchill who said, tall trees go, grow tall because they grow silently. So solitude, stillness, silence, regularly has a profound effect in meditation. Yehudi Menuhin, the great violinist, believes so much in organic food that he has opened a food shop in London where only organic food is served. Yehundi is handsome and upright and has a very fine mind. Stamina wins my admiration. With his fellow members of the Organic Food Society, he sells food of unspoiled flavour and goodness produced under natural conditions. Are we all being slowly poisoned by chemical preservatives and sprays? Here we go again, pesticides, herbicides, as Kevin Trudeau always expounded, and genetically modified foods. And then you have Big Pharma and all the drugs that enters into the system all doing damage. Dr. Frank Bicknell, a British food expert, believes we are. Yehunde Menuhin believes we are. And I believe we are. I believe that unless your food is right, you cannot be alert in your mind and fit in your body. MSG is another one that has found in so many. Monosodium glutamate actually has an effect on the neuron, neurons in the brain as does aspartame, the artificial sweetener, actually kills neural pathways in the brain or damages neurons in the brain. So these are things you wouldn't realize and artificial sweeteners are in a lot of foodstuffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To live long and enjoy the fruits of your demonstrations you should consider what you eat and take only those things which make for a healthy long life. When Charlie Chapman recently fathered his 11th child at 70, the world tittered and marvelled. Charlie has the stamina and energy of a man half his years. He swims and plays tennis for exercise. But most of all, he eats only the right foods. Dr. Robert Gross, an internationally famous nutrition expert, declared recently that Chaplin has stuck to his diet, stuck to a diet, which is one of the healthiest the doctor has ever known. It includes plenty of fruit, a daily salad of lettuce, celery, sweet red peppers, cucumbers, parsley, carrots and tomatoes, plus a baked potato, rice, lentils, soya beans and natural cheese. Dr. Gross says that much that such food helps to retain vitality well into old age. David Niven, the famous film star, gets headlines like Time stops for the ageless Niven. He is said to look younger every time you meet him, despite the fact that 1964 will be his 30th year as a film star. He is one of the richest and most powerful men in Hollywood. He is all for organic foods in their natural state. He is so youthful that everyone turns to look at him. Man ages and kills himself through abuse, malnutrition and that deadly creeping poison. As a magician, you should know which are the right foods and determine to be forever young. I would like to see you with a library of books on right foods for health, and have you read them until they were a very part of you. It is no good doing it by halves. All your food must be right. As I say, 
cleanses factor into that equation and also does supplementation proper nutrition so it's not just food these days so much minerals and vitamins are depleted in the food system in the food chain unless you grow your own as naturally of course but still it's a wide area well worked researching Women who refuse to grow old are many. Among them, as we all know, the beautiful Marilyn Dietrich. Vivian Leigh is another. They look many years younger than they are and have endless vitality and charm. Did you know that the ancient Greeks lived 200 years or more apiece, vigorous to the last and no grey hairs? Actually, hormone banal, banal, hormones... The hormonal system in the human body, as well as glands, glands and adrenal fatigue, the whole body systems are so many different things, all have to be looked at and approached in the healthiest, natural approach to things. Yeah. Justin Glass tells about all this in a paperback and reminds us that Thomas Park lived in London for 207 years. When you begin to study age and read all the books you can on the subject, you will find that there are an endless number of cases all through where people have lived well over a hundred. Does one have to be a vegetarian to acquire this wonderful health and long life? Does being a vegetarian help as regards working magic? It helps a lot because it clears your mind and purifies your body. It helps you to think and particularly to listen into your subconscious. It takes away all heaviness and lightens your step. It is not a necessity, but an advantage. You become more sensitive, feel more deeply, and more gentle. Heavy meat eaters are apt to be aggressive at times, more easily disturbed, prone to bad tempers. Many of the world's strongest men are vegetarians, and certainly the strongest animals are. The gorilla eats nuts, the horse does not eat meat, neither does the elephant. If you eat meat for strength, you are making a big mistake. Johnny Weismuller, the screen Tarzan, never ate meat. George Arliss, the famous film star of the old days, was a vegetarian. vegetarian. Today, Rupert Davis, better known as Inspector Magritte, is a strict vegetarian. He eats all the right foods, which include garlic, plenty of parsley, salads and herb omelettes. You might think a meal without meat is dull. I know a lady who dined at the home of the Lady Dowding and her husband. Air Chief Marshal Lord Dowding. They are strict vegetarians, and she has never stopped talking about that meal. It was the very nicest I've ever had, she said. I shall never forget it. The Lady Dowding, of course, is spearhead of the Beauty Without Cruelty campaign, and does wonderful work. Can she perform magic? At one time she had a lot of mice in her house. She said to them, I love you very much, but please go away. They went, every one of them, quickly. I have known people to talk to the wasps or beehives like this. The Lady Dowding certainly has magic in her voice. She speaks softly, sincerely with love. I think it is a wonderful demonstration of the power of the spoken word. It takes many more, it takes more than food to be healthy. I am thinking of baths, more baths and still more bats. Bats of olive oil, bats of salt, sea water bats, bats of milk and wine, and many other luxurious washings so essential to longevity and physical well-being. Bats have been used as aids to youth and beauty for thousands of years, and both the Romans and Greeks. When Rome and Greece were in the zenith of their glory, were firm patrons of the bath as a means to physically, to physical fitness and good looks. Did you know that there were 850 public baths in ancient Rome? More than 800 baths in one city? Think of it. The Romans and Greeks indulged in luxurious bathing far more than we do, and they were a very beautiful race of people. Soap and water is not enough. A Roman bath had several stages. It began with a cold one, which was followed by a tepid and then a hot one, after which the bather was frictioned and massaged, and finally anointed with oils. 
In olden days, also, the beauties of the court of France vied with each other in inventing new baths for the beautification of the skin. A daily bath was, or may be counted as one of the first essentials to long life and rejuvenation. It is perfectly true, tried and tested, and experience is related of how Sir William Arbuthnot Lane went to the Rockefeller Institute and was shown by Dr. Abus Carroll the first living tissues he had been able to grow on a microscopic slide. It was discovered that if he fed these pieces of tissue once a day and washed them out once a day, they grew and thrived. If he fed them once a day but did not wash them for two days, they grew feeble and died. Through lack of a daily bath, decay and death set in immediately. This proved, said the doctor, that the tissues would grow indefinitely if fed and washed. It makes you think, doesn't it? The human body is a vast group of tiny living cells. All of the cells all over the body must be constantly bathed every day. I could go on and on at great length, but I think I have said enough to make you realise the importance of a bath. I want you to be able to work magic. I have written all these pages trying to show you the way, and I don't want you to fail in your demonstrations because I'm not doing the things you should. Off the top of my head now, I um, read some place that the immune system, our immune system, well, Stephen Lewis of the aimprogram.com made a great statement saying that our immune system is basically our spiritual beliefs can boost our immune system in a big way. But also, the immune system is the, a healthy gut is 80% of an immune, a healthy immune system. So healthy bacteria in the gut are, is, is another research area to, to look into. Another secret of longevity is massage from head to foot every morning and evening. It is one of the quickest methods of increasing and maintaining youthful buoyancy. Now here also you can also include, which are great, is, um, these vibro gyms where um, they were designed for use in space and they vibrated high and low frequency. You can stand in them or sit in them on different muscle tone groups. And also a rebounder. Alan Carter designed rebounder and rebounding and that's another area you have it works every single cell in the system absolutely fabulous way in just it works all the lymph in doctrine system okay so another secret of longevity is massage from head to foot every morning and evening it is one of the quickest methods of increasing and maintaining youthful buoyancy after a fall, our first instinct is to rub ourselves. This is because it is the natural thing to do. Nature intended us to rub ourselves. You cannot massage yourself with your clothes on. You have to strip if you would do it properly. Once you feel the exhilaration of massage, you never want to leave it off. That is as it should be. You are working for a fit mind and body in order that you can bring out the hidden magic. And massage is one of the things you should always do. It gives your life and fitness so that you are able to enjoy your successes to the full. So that you are a good example to others. So that people admire you and believe in you. So that you attract. Massage unlocks the door to radiant health, strength and long life. Massage makes you efficient. It possesses the unique feature of coordinating the action of all the vital organs, muscles and other parts of your body. Which are strengthened simultaneously. Off note now, yoga is another supposedly excellent regime or Tai Chi for internal organs benefit. So if loyally and steadfastly follow, followed, massage rewards the performer with superb health and vibrant energy. The passing years will seem to leave you untouched physically. If you strip daily, you can do this in your own bathroom and massage yourself all over. You can start at first by sprinkling talc on your palm and polishing your skin with your hands. 
To do this all over is most rejuvenating and encourages the flow of a natural lubricant, making the skin soft and velvety. When you have thoroughly accustomed yourself to this practice, you may like to use oil, and as you become more spartan and used to the sun and air of your nude body, you may go one further and submit yourself to a nice massage. There have been wonderful cures from massage, and strong fingers with the gentle strength of the masseur brings healing with the touch. Take the case of a nine-year-old boy, Cecil. Cecil was rapidly losing the use of his legs when he was brought for cure by massage. Then the boy became stronger every day, and soon the time came when he could romp and play and kick a ball about. An old lady with a fractured leg, so stiff that she could not move it, took massage, and now waves her stick in the air. A youth in an invalid chair, wearing a spinal jacket which the doctor said he would never be able to take off, had a few weeks' treatment, and has not only thrown off his jacket, but rides a bicycle to and from a job he found for himself. Massage on the bare flesh has, and can, straighten distorted limbs, release struck strictured nerves and restore circulation massage helps the vital spark of repair which is in every human body nature does the rest massage dispels all nerves and give you and gives you an olympian calmness and poise massage searches out every cell and sinew rousing them and tuning them into harmony massage makes your body sing there are no shortcuts to health. It must be acquired and maintained throughout life by the observation of strict rules. Massage and rich diet. Another thing which is splendid for your strength is to treat yourself to bags of sea salt. It is quite cheap. Use it to the point of wickedness. Be extravagant. Many acrobats who amaze the public by holding a person up on one hand for quite a length of time and similar feats daily rub salt water on the arms to build strong muscles. Table salt will do. And dancing is very good for you. Everyone who values his health should dance because dancing teaches all sorts of really important things so necessary to radiant health such as balance, rhythm, harmony of brain and movement and self-control. Dancing awakens in you the desire to do beautiful things beautifully and brings wonderful tranquility to the mind. A quote one time said, dance like no one's watching and love like it's never gonna hurt. All magicians do the most beautiful things of magic beautifully. The magical Claudine has beautiful grace of movement as she goes from one magical turn to another. Her hand gestures her hand gestures are a poem or poetry in motion, but she is not the only one. You will find that all magicians have tremendous style in putting things over. Nothing is done clum clumsily. They have charm, charisma, poise, fluency, or fluid natural in their movements. There is grace worth watching and studying. Dancing gives you this grace, as does the universe. And you, as a magician, must master it. Here is the story of a famous dancer. Once a puny boy of seven, Red McCarthy, started with fear when anyone spoke to him. Every few seconds a leg would twitch violently and he would twist his neck and writhe. His condition had got so bad that he had to be sent home from school. This boy, who suffered from the worst form of St. Vitus dance, was to become a famous Olympian athlete and a great and lovely dancer, dancing nude but for the scantiest sequin loin cloth, getting the air to his body. Dancing fascinated him, and at the end of twelve months he was really brilliant, and what was more important, every trace of his terrible malady had vanished. Rhythm, fresh air, and giving his body all the sunshine he could, which we know now gives us vitamin D3, and that's why there's hardly any flus or colds in the winter months. I, cor I sound corrected. 
and this is why there is hardly any colds or flu in the summer months when people get plenty of sunshine and their vitamin D3 is up. So rhythm, fresh air and giving his body all the sunshine he could had done what no doctors could do. This hopeless invalid became Red McCarthy, the silver phantom dancer on skates. At the World Fair Chicago he amazed thousands by his spectacular barrel jumping act. Leaping over as many as 15 19 inch barrels, he, w he would jump 12, twisting in the air so that he landed backwards on one foot, a feat never attempted by anyone else. He made 24,862 of these jumps. Dancing completely cured his ills and his nerves and will do the same for you or anyone who takes up dancing for health. Everything in life is rhythmical. As wave upon wave on the seashore, day follows night, the four seasons follows one another in due succession, you should cultivate rhythm, rhythm in the open air and sunshine particularly. It is the finest way to youth, the finest way to vitality and radiant health. Skipping is also a splendid way to keep fit. As you proceed, step by step, practice, practicing right diet and massage, dancing, skipping and all the many things necessary to your health, you will notice changes taking place in yourself. Your mind will become more alert. Your whole outlook on life will become more positive and you will begin to live as you were meant to live. You will be able to do what you want at any time, never mind the difficulties. All barriers will be down. You will be able to bring out the magic in your mind because most important of all, these things will make you positive magnetic, vibrant, able to achieve mind control. You will wonder why you never did these things before. An extract from Fitness Magazine, October 1958. Quote, Indeed, he is as great a psychologist as he is a magician, and he has lectured at Cambridge University and before many distinguished audiences. In his relation to physical health, he believes the fitness of the mind plays an all-important part. al Quran says, we are free men, free to eat what we fancy, or to eat intelligently and cultivate a healthier taste, free to climb to the stars and free to slide down into our own particular hell. <laughs>